Hello, it's me, and I figure it's now time to attack Twisty Tex's brilliant 4x6x8 uh, bump cuboid. So the first part of this, I'm just going to jump right into it. And like I say, it's been a little while since I solved the cuboid, so let's see how this goes. I think I need a wider camera angle here. So the first part of any Ultimate Shapeshifter is to solve based on its smallest common form, which in this case is the 4x4 form. So basically I'm going to be doing a 4x4 bump cube solve. So 4x4 bump cube, you can see it's got uh, uneven sides, uneven edges until you get in the right position. So I'm going to do it in the standard way. This actually harkens back to one of the first mods that I solved. But um, what I like to do is find the center that's easiest to uh, work with. So I can't use color, I have to use size. So this is pretty large. And it looks like there's only one that's not available. Now most of these, because of the color of the stickers, are super cubes. This one is not. So that's kind of a, a kindness. Makes it a little bit easier. But I should be able to more easily visualize uh, like this one. I think this is one that um, belongs up here. So I'm just trying to reduce my centers. So I'm going to line up a center to uh, match. Well, maybe it's this one. So let's see. I'm going to move this down, and I see that this doesn't quite line up with this, but it does line up with this. So now that I see that these two are lined up, and this is why I like to start off with the biggest ones because it's easiest to visualize. I'll move it up here. Oop, if I can find it. Ooh, I lost track somehow. How did I lose track? Oh, because I didn't turn it right. Okay, we'll turn this. Now I'm gonna move this carefully because this is the most likely possibility of getting pops if I'm not too careful, just because of alignment. Okay, so, and just like that, I have my first 4x4 center. Now, the next 4x4 center is I usually do the opposite, but I can't very well do that because, well, um, I don't know what's opposite here. But I do know that this edge lines up here, so I'm going to find a center that matches with this edge. So it's just a matter of tooling this around and finding something. Now, I notice that this center is all in. Or is it? Nope, it's not. I thought it was, but it's not. Okay, so I need to find center, center pieces. Don't want to pop anything. I'm super, super paranoid about that. Uh, okay, so what I'm doing is I'm trying to find something that matches this size. So I'm going to have to just sort of spot it. And it's pretty sunk in there. So I'm going to say there should be something here. Maybe this guy over here. So let's turn this. And as I use this puzzle, I think I'm going to get more and more comfortable with it. Move this in. And now the question is, I don't know if you can see it, but does this piece match with this? If so, then this is the proper size. I'm going to assume yes for now. Subject to change. Um, unless I get a ruler and try to measure it. So I'm going to say it's, it's this is the general size that I'm looking for. So I'm going to try to find others of the same size. And that would be this. So these three are in. I just need to put the fourth one in here. And uh, here's a very small piece here. So how this is going to work. So I'm going to move this like so. So I've got these two isolated. So this one is free to move out to line up with another center should it work. So I've got a little center in here. I'm going to move this here. And now I'm going to see if I can line this little center with this little center. They have a whole collection of little centers. And these two, these do match up, so I'm going to move this into place. Now what makes this more challenging is the fact that I can't use... Nope, didn't quite work. I wonder why. It should have. Uh, let's see, I think I did something wrong. So these two... Oh, you know what? This needs to match up. Oh, that's interesting. Let me move this up over here. 
end up over here. Okay, so the perspective is an issue too because it's hard to visualize how far, you know, what layer something is in that's useful. So this is the 4x4 four four layer. Actually, or is it? I'm kind of doubting something here. Maybe it's got to come from here. Nope, nope, I can tell because of this. Okay, so it is these four, and I've got these three that are in. I need to find another small center. I assumed it was one of these guys. Let me move this in again. And no, it's actually not that. Okay. Anything in here? No. Anything in here? Uh, well, maybe this guy. There's a tiny one over here, but I don't think that belongs. Which means it probably comes from this guy over here. And there's a tiny center over here. So let's see if I can move that in. Okay. I go like, boom. Now, where's my little center? Here, so. Okay. Let's move this down. And you can see that it matches in there. Pull it back and move it up. Okay, so you can see that this center, these centers are in. It might be hidden in shadows, but there it is. And uh, it lined up, the reason why I did this is because it lined up with an edge piece that lined with this. Now I don't I no longer know where that is. It might have gotten long since lost with all of my turning and stuff, but let's see if I can maybe get it back. Okay, there's this. Okay, and there's this. So I was lining these centers up because it lined with this. So that is my hope. Now, I'm going to continue, except I need to have corners. I need to have corners that line up with those. So give me a large corner that I can deal with. Large corner. Not this one. Well, at least not at that side. Because there's no way I'm going to know what the other centers are unless I line corners up. Okay, so here's a corner that works. So does this match to the center that I just did? Well, let's find out. It doesn't match to this center, so let's find another corner that might. Uh, there's this corner here. Maybe I should just keep the center where it is and abandon it for a second and find others that I can better match to the corner here. Okay, here's a corner. Okay, so this is interesting. It's hard for me to say, but I think these centers here match to this corner. And if that's the case, then I can find the other centers that match to this corner on this side. And it appears to be this size over here. Now, admittedly, the bumping of this puzzle is not very profound, so there is a little bit of uh, eyeballing that has to happen. But what corners fit with this? Uh, with this? And I think it's this guy over here, which means it might be this cor this center over here. So I'm going to start lining centers up here with this and see if it works. Now it's not that, that's too big. How about this guy over here? Sometimes when doing a puzzle for the first time, it's hard to explain exactly what I'm doing, but luckily this is more of a demonstration than a tutorial. I'll tell you that the playability of the puzzle is great. Aha! Huh? Okay, I like this size, but I don't like its location. Maybe I do like its location. Maybe I made a hasty judgment about its location. Maybe if I just move it up to here, that'll be fine. Get this out of the way. Carefully. Boom. And move this back down. Okay, so I'm going to start putting in other centers that's of that size and I notice that I have another center that looks something of that size right here let's see if it works so I'm going to move it down 
And nope, I was mistaken, it ain't that. I don't think it's anywhere up here. And it's certainly not here, so it's, I've only got two places to choose from. Maybe it's one of these guys here. Let's see. First I gotta check it. Okay, so this fits nicely here. So I'm just gonna keep going with the sliding U technique. Slide it to the left, bring it down to, on the left, slide it back to the right, bring it back on the right, slide it back to the left. So as you can see, I mean, the main reason for doing this is to demonstrate the quality of this puzzle. Uh, and the movement is just so smooth that the challenge of this has nothing to do with that. I don't have to struggle with movement at all. It's amazing. Okay, so this is in. So now I need the fourth piece. Is it one? Eh, it's probably not one of those two because there's too many. Is it this? Oh, okay. Was in the wrong place. Uh, one. Okay, maybe it's the one that I just lined up. Let's see. One. Two. Nope, not that one. Oh, but it is this one, I think. Yeah. So I'll continue doing what I'm doing with the sliding U technique. Move this here. One, two. Good thing about sliding U techniques is it's so predictable. Move this back. One, two. And move this back here. One, two. Okay, that should have put this one in, which it did. Oh, wait a minute. I thought it would put both. Okay, apparently there's one more here. Can you hear that suffice? No. Which means there's one more, and that's probably this guy here. Let me see. Nope, it's the one that's just a little bit smaller than that, which is this guy here. Okay, let's carefully line it up. There we go. Okay, so let's see if it matches into here. Oof. One two, and it does, turn it to here, one, two, turn it back, one, two, turn it back to here, and one, two. Okay, so now all this is in, all this is in. So you can see the centers are coming in nicely, which leaves the last two centers. Um, now, I guess I should really check my work because I'm not too sure. So this center, or this corner maps onto which of these centers? Obviously none of these, none of those. This one, uh, possibly. And then this maps onto here too. Okay, so there's a good likelihood that, that those are correct. I'm going to keep that there for now because I have to do the last two centers. Okay, there's this, which maps onto here. So this is going to map onto what? So this is done. So I've got these two centers. This is going to map onto which one of these sides? Looks like none of them. Which means it should come from up here somewhere, I think. So what if I want like this? What if I move this down? This maps onto here pretty well. So these two look to be of the same size. So that's, that's good. Hmm. Every time I hear a little snap, I get nervous. And I gotta just turn this over to here. And once more over to here. Okay, so, oh, what have I done? I'm move this up here, back here, okay. Um, I had it and I somehow lost it. Here, 
here and here. Okay, uh, I had something going, but I somehow lost track of what I was doing. And as a matter of fact, I somehow completely lost track. Okay, so let's find those, let's find that again. Okay, here's my, t no. So I know I'm onto something, I just don't know what it is yet. Okay, this doesn't map onto here. Let's see what this maps onto. This is okay here, and this, I don't know. Might be okay there, but I just, I just can't tell by how it looks. So somehow I got bewildered. That can happen during the solve. We're in the middle of something and you had to lock your, your algorithm got locked up somehow. And so you end up with puzzle bewilderment, which means you're not sure where you came from. You're not sure what you just did. So you sort of have to start from scratch a little bit. All right, so let me do, let me do just that. I think this maps onto here and this maps onto here. That's a good start. So I know that these two are fine. Okay, where does this map on to? This... Maps on to here, and this maps on to here, so that all goes to show that that's all okay. Okay. And this maps on to here. So I need another one that maps on to this one and maps on to the top. Hmm. Well, there is this. I haven't done this one yet. Or maybe I did. I just got bewildered and forgot what I was doing. Okay. Does this map onto here? I don't know. I'm going to say it does. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got. I did get bewildered. That We already discovered that. This doesn't map onto here anywhere. Okay. I've got this guy. And I think that's where I sort of kind of left off. These two sort of kind of map onto each other, which is interesting. Um, all right. I think we like this one here because I think this maps onto here. So, so this is the piece, this is the piece that we're gonna be using to build ourselves, I think. Time will tell. Okay, I've got a couple pieces here that might suffice. So I'll move this in like that. Bump it out of the way and move it back. Okay, anything else here that seems to fit? This guy? No, I didn't think so. How about this? Doesn't really look like it, but we'll try it out anyway. And yes. So I'm going to continue a sliding U without pausing or hesitating, which could lead to a dangerous bewilderment. Okay. So we have these guys in, I just need one more, and I have a sneaking suspicion it's gonna come from the top. Yeah, right here. Turn right here, slide it to the left, down on the left, slide it back to the right, up on the right, back on the left. Now it's the subtleties of the shape, of the bumping of this puzzle that's gonna lend to the difficulty. Because it's those subtleties that I might have messed up on. Okay, so I have a couple of sides. I, I'm now down to the last two sides. And it's a question of what maps to where. And I'm going to say these map to here and this. Does this map to here? It's so hard to tell without moving pieces out of the way.
these two map to each other. This I know maps to here. I'm pretty sure maps to here, or does it? I don't know. And this, nah, see, this doesn't. Oh, it's so hard to say. Now this doesn't map to here, and these two don't completely map to each other. Or maybe they do. Wow. See, these two look like they belong together. Well, either way you look at it, I think this big one, these big ones go up here. So I'm going to, it's gonna become apparent if I'm wrong during the reduction of the edges. But here's my first theory. My first theory is that these centers are all correct. So you can see that I've reduced the centers, I think. And I'm going to assume that they're correct. And even if they're not, I can easily change them by sliding new techniques. But they're so far from the edges that it's, it's kind of hard to say. Imagine how difficult a ghost version of these would be. That would be something. Okay, so what center was I using? I was using... That was my... Here's my original center. So I could go through the process of matching them up, but I'm not going to do that because I think edge pairing is just going to be easier. So I'm going to take a look at large edges and see what can pair to each other. So these edges look like they could match. But there's a somewhat large edge, like these two edges are already paired, which is good. See, these two? That was kind of a gift. Oh, okay. Now this, does this match to here? And no, it's so very close. How about this? No, not even close. All right, so that doesn't match to there. So maybe these two match to each other. So it's trial and error, mostly error with the trial. Got to make sure I'm moving the correct layers. Okay. How about this? And yes, so these two match with, with, each, other, with each other. So I'm going to move this down. Bump it all the way. Move it down, substitute it with this, and then bring it back up. Making sure I did all of them right. And that's pretty much what I'm gonna do for the duration of this particular part. And this is edge reduction. So move this to here. Does this match to here? Yes. So I got lucky there again. So move this down. Bring this out of the way. Put this in its place. Move this across. And move this up. Okay, well, let's see. Let's try that again because these guys match up over here. And let's do it slowly. This comes down here. This moves here out of the way. This moves down. This moves across. And this moves back. Up. So this next part is really just um, matching. Uh, for instance, these don't match. So I'll find something that does. And I'm going with the larger ones first because they're just easier to visualize. Now let's see, this one has a basic shape that's kind of like that. I think. Can't hurt to check. If I pull this up, you can see a nice match. And these two aren't in. So once again, we carefully pull this down. Move this across. I don't want to struggle with it too much because I'll end up with puzzle bewilderment. I think that's a DSM 
classification. Oh, move this here. And up we go. Very good. Okay, here's another really big one. Can I find another really big one? I can. I will. I think I did. Move this across here. Now, does this match? No. No, I don't know what I was thinking. I know. I thought it would match. Uh, how about this guy? Or any of these? Sometimes, if I just don't feel like doing a lot of hunting around, I just keep putting things in its place and seeing what matches up. This one is slightly big, just like that one, so maybe it's of a similar size. Again, because it's not too apparent where the layers are, I gotta be careful not to slice, do a middle slice four by four move. Aha, no, and I got so excited. Um, maybe this? Well, maybe this will match up to this guy. Yep, I had a feeling. Okay, so this will come down. It's hard to pick out what layers are doing what, so I have to let the corners guide me. So this corner is deep, so I know that it comes deep down to here. Move this in place. Move this across. And move this back up. Okay. Um, what I like about four by four solves is they're not as cumbersome as some of the other the other larger puzzles because just when you're getting tired of one process you've already reduced it so if this were a six by six version I'd be reducing like crazy into infinity uh, no not there maybe just by random chance no that's close but not really Let's, um, let's move these up here. Oh, oh, does that, okay. Aha! Found something. Um, are these reduced? And no, they're not. So we're gonna go down so that these are together. Move it in like thus. Turn, turn, and up. This isn't even the hard part yet. Okay, what about this? These, this looks like it, well, I don't know. I just don't know, but let's check it out. We'll come all the way up to here. And to here. Do any of these guys map to each other? No, and no. Yeah, that was kind of a pipe dream, but how about this? I noticed that, is it, no? It's in the wrong layer. These two are already reduced. These guys are already reduced, and we're back to where we started. Uh, okay, fair enough. Whoop. Don't take that layer with us. Okay, how about something here? Uh, no. But these guys, I think, might map to each other. Move this all the way up here. All the way across. So far this remains the most challenging 4x4 four four bump puzzle that I've done. No, they're close, but they're not, not what they want to be. These two? No. Okay. No. Oh. Aha. No. Yes. Maybe, possibly, I don't think so. Okay, I think I'm I think I'm trying to be too quick about it. So I got this this uh, slice over here. Doesn't want to come over to there. Maybe it matches to this. Let me just do an experiment. Uh, yes, it does. Okay. So I found two edges that belong with each other, and that's this guy over here. Now just out of curious, no, okay. So this will come down, across, 
move this down. I almost moved that down. That would have destroyed centers yet again. And up. Okay. So now is when I'm ready to be done with this part. But we're going to keep going. Move this up like so. Now, where does this... What is this map to? Here? No. Here? Nope. How about one of these guys? One, two. Not even close. One, two. Uh, no. One, two. Okay, any that, uh, these two look like maybe they want to be next to each other. Uh, just in case. One, two. Two, maybe something down here. One, two, nope, one, two, okay. Anyway, I'll go ahead and follow my hunch here. The more I'm using the puzzle, notice the faster I, I am with the turns. Aha! Found it. The faster I am with the turns because I'm getting more comfortable with the puzzle. It's almost like learning to ride a bike or any tactile skill. The more things go into muscle memory, the more your hands feel comfortable with the subtle, unconscious movements, the more the cerebellum can make small corrections and inform the brain what it can feel comfortable with. It's almost like a proprioceptive signaling, which is why the more you play with puzzles, the more you feel comfortable with that particular one. Okay, I think I'm getting down to the last two. Maybe I'm even close to being there because maybe these are the last two over here. Move this in, yes. Move this in up here, and yes. Okay, so I have to join these guys together. This wants to be with this guy here. Whoa. And this wants to be with this guy here. So to do the last two edges, what you do is you line it up so that each one is, whoa, right across from each other, That the ones that it wants to be next to, these guys here. And now we carefully do the algorithm. Move it in like this and do R, F, I, U, R, I, F, and slice it back. Okay, now with that said, I should have all of my edges and centers of my 4x4 reduced. So I'm looking around and I'm seeing that that is the case. Now, it might not look that much more solved, but it actually is. There's a little bit more order. You can see that things are clumped together a little bit more. So we're going to attempt to do a 4x4. Well, now we've got this as a 3x3 bump cube. Now, this is the 3x3 bump version. The way that I do that is, I, I again, I find the largest center, and that'll be the base. So this looks to be the largest center. Well, yeah, okay. And then I try to find the edges. Now, the edges will ultimately tell me if I was correct about my centers. So what center does this map to? It looks like this one. So this center, this edge rather, maps to these two centers. So let's go ahead and find some more. This might map to this. I'm not sure. Let's move this into here. Nope. Not quite big enough. How about this one? Nope. Not quite big enough. Okay. Where are my big centers? Okay. This is big, but it doesn't go to this center here. So let's find where this is supposed to go. This doesn't quite map to here, not to here. I think it might map to this one. So we'll go ahead and pull this up. So I'm trying to get my edges in right now, get my cross as it were. Now this is a good sign because this edge matches with this corner, I think, and this corner also matches with this edge. So this belongs between these two and I figure that it matches to these centers. So right now we're doing pretty well when it comes to the, uh, the, the um, 3x3 three three bump solve. Okay, let's just find a large edge. Okay, this is a fairly large edge. So let's see where this might map to here and here. Do we like it? No. 
We don't really like it. Never liked it. Here and here. Yes, we like this. And we think it maps to this center over here. Boy, right now I'm craving colors. Boy, would colors be nice at about this time. And this doesn't map to here. But now well, this is big, but it maps to these edges. So I'm not, I'm not even going to get started on that one. No. But I have three edges in place. This one looks nice and big. Look at that. Look at that. All right, so let's move it down. I'll move it this way if it wants. Okay. And boom. Okay. So I think I have all of my edges in, and I think this matches to, to the center as well. Okay. I, I seem to have lost one of my corners, but that's okay. I know it exists. So... Now let's put the corners in. Let's try to guess what corners go where. This looks like a nice, large, robust corner. Does not map to this one. Well, that's very strange to me because it's not so strange to me. So it doesn't belong there. Maybe it belongs here. Uh, nope. So, guys, I'm having an incredibly good time right now. I'm in puzzle heaven. Well, it doesn't map to here too. I'm running out of options. I'm starting to question some of my assumptions about the structure of this. This is my last hope. Aha! Hope springs eternal. Okay, so this does belong here. I know this edge belongs up here, but not coordinated with this. I, I mean, rather this corner belongs here, but not with that edge. So let's take that out. And let's just experiment with other places and see if everything fits nicely. Aha! So this is looking good. So you can see the structure of this part's coming in nicely. I have a hunch that this is not gonna work at all. Well, truth be told, that wasn't my real hunch, but it turned out to be correct anyway. Okay, how about this one? Now bear in mind, this is a 4x4, four four. aha, this works here, so parodies are a possibility. Which means I might be red bulling this, oh I will definitely be red bulling this thing. And turn, nope, I think this is the wrong, the wrong corner. Um, maybe it's Twisty Texas corner here. I'm just RIDRDing it until I can get it in. Again, cerebellar muscle memory. Aha, uh -huh. oh, nope. It's not right, so this is not the right corner for this side. This one, perhaps? Now, when there's only a limited number of corners, I could experiment like this. Aha, okay, good. So, this represents the first of my solved 4x4 four four slash 3x3 three three sides. So you can see how deep this center goes in with this. So now I do the middle layer. <laughs> so you can see that there's going to be some perspective issues here. Uh, this doesn't seem to belong to any of these layers down here. So this belongs to here. And does it belong with this? Yes. Okay. So we do U R U I. RI, UI. You can almost corner cut with this, but I don't recommend doing that. Don't corner cut. Okay, so this is in with this. This belongs up here, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna seek that one out. This doesn't belong here, it doesn't belong here, this must belong here. Uh, does it belong with does it come down to here? And no, which means this must come in this position, this edge position. UI L I U, L, U, F, U, I, F, I. Okay, so this is in. Now, where else do we have to go? I'm looking for anything that matches up with these two. Or these two, okay. 
now it's going to be a little bit more obscure because maybe this is actually in. Okay, I suspect these two belong on this side, they're just in the wrong place. Oh, no, this is in the right place. I suspect this is not. Anything that I can see that belongs here. Okay, I'm just going to move this guy up because I suspect that he belongs on one of those other sides and I won't be able to figure it out unless I move it up to the top. And it's easy enough to do that. And down. Okay. Now where did you go? You went right here. And it obviously doesn't belong there, if that was the one. I don't know if it was. How about you? No? What do you got to say for yourself? Aha! Here, and then this is going to come down to here. Okay, so it did bear fruit. U, R, U, I, R, I, U, I, F, I, U, and F. Okay, so we have one left. And it's this guy. It's got to be this guy. Just based on the structure of this puzzle, it's got to be this guy. You know, because this is a full scramble, I'll have the world record on speed cubing this thing. No, I'm just kidding. Whoa, 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 careful. I lost concentration, got bewildered again. Okay, so the middle layer is done. It's hard to see, I know, but it sort of maps out, so to speak. So now you look at the edges here. This is rotated up. This is rotated up and this is not. So we do not have parity. So all I have to do is to get the cross on the top, F, U, R, U, I, R, I, F, I. So you can see all these are up. None of these are rotated correctly. Now, I still could have a certain kind of a parity. Oh, this is in, this is in. So all these edges are in. So I'm going to, hmm. How do I know which corner is in? Good question. Let me just do this. U, R. U, I, L, I. This is a variant of the sliding U technique. It's getting these corners oriented. Orientation of the last layer. O L L. Okay, so I was looking for confirmation something like this. This is in, this is facing out of me, this has to rotate up. So I'm going to go R U R I U R to U R I. Okay, so now that I have that orientation here, everything's oriented. This maps out here. These two need to flip flop. That's going to be 2R, U, 2R, UI, 2R, UI, D, 2R, UI, 2R, U, 2R. This moves back, and you can see that all of my corners are in. Now, Here's my question to you guys. Why am I doing this structure? Why am I doing it like this? And the reason I'm doing it like this is to decrease the bandaging as much as possible. So this isn't over here. We're lucky because there's no four layer parity with this. These two will flip flop. To R, to you, to R, to you, to R, to you. And now these guys will swap. To R, U, to R, U, to R, to U, to R, to U, to R, U, to R, U, I, and to R. So we can see we now have our 4x4 four four solve. All the centers are in, the edges are in, and we happen to not have um, a four layer parity with this, four, uh, four layer to three layer parity. And as you can see, we've retained a little bit more of the shape. We now have to go ahead and get some more, well, the next step after this is we have to get our centers in.
uh, especially the centers that are easily to place. Easy, yeah, that are easy to place. So looking at this over here, there's certain kinds of centers that I'm not going to get access to unless I do sliding your techniques, but certain ones that I, I will be able to. For instance, this, what goes over to here, this I believe can come down to, no, not there. It might be easier to see these really long ones. These really long ones can map out to these guys here. So that's the quickest, that's the easiest to get in. So this can come to, no, not that side, it must be this side. Perhaps? Will it? Yeah, so, well, the problem is that I can't because I am bandaged with this. So as I spread out, I want to get the six layer sides. The problem is, is I can't put any centers in until I get the edges down. So before I get the centers in, I have to flatten the puzzle. To flatten the puzzle means I have to get the edges out of this uh, awkward position there. So looking at this, um, I've got these two centers that I already reduced, that's in. If I move out one more, I've got these guys over here. So this is out, this is out, this is not out, and this is out. If I've got four, it's easy, just move it. Bang. I now have the majority of these down. How about this? These two are in, in other words, they're rotated correctly, and these two are out. So how do I move those down? Well, I've got this one that's also out, so I'm going to move this to here. And then I'm going to turn this around, temporarily, boom, so that it matches in this layer. This, this, and this are rotated up, so I'm simply going to rotate it down like that, boom. And I want to maintain my 4x4 solve, so I'm just going to move this back. So now what I have is if I look at the layers just out, the 6x6 edges, uh, this is out, and, well, this is out, over here. So I've got two that are out. I want to move them next to each other and then I can do a Red Bull algorithm to get them back. So I'm going to move this like so, bring this over here so it's next to that, and move this in like, whoop, thus. So now in my 6x6 six six layer I just have these two that are out and I gotta make sure they're not being bandaged. This isn't bandaged here and this isn't bandaged here. So if I do a Red Bull, these will be placed in. So it's going to be 2R, 2B, 2U, L, 2 up, RI, 2 up, R, 2 up, 2F, R, Got to do a 2F. There you go. 2F and finish it up with a LI. Think of liberate. LI. 2B and 2R. Don't really have to do that part, but why not? Okay, so now my 6x6 six six edges are down. What about my 8x8 eight eight edges? That's this. So I only have two which is good, which is fine. I simply move this over to here. And I want a red bullet, but this is in the way. So, we have a little bit of a problem here. If I can take this, move it next to this guy, I can red bullet down. But the problem is, I'm bandaged. Why am I bandaged? Because this is in the wrong layer. Wrong layer. This is also in the wrong layer. So how do I fix that? Well, I have a particular way of doing that. As long as this is in the short layer, where it should be over here. This is sh this is this short. These short edges are in the long layer. It's going to bandage my eight by eight edges. So I need to move these to here, and I want to exchange it with two long edges, which is these, those over there. So I'm going to take this, go one two. I'm going to negotiate an exchange between whoop, these guys, boom, and then I'm going to move it back. Now, in so doing, I should have taken out the bandaging, so that's good over here, and all is right with the world. So now, I can take this, one, two, I can move this in over here, and because I want to preserve my 4x4 four four solve, see, now you can see how much less bandaged this puzzle is now. 
Now I've got these two out and I can red bowl them in and I've taken my bandaging down that much further. 2R. Now I can do 2R. 2B. 2U. And now this layer, L. 2 up, RI. 2 up, R. 2 up. 2F, R, 2F, Li, 2B, and you don't have to do it, but you can, 2R. Okay, so now what I've done is I've taken all the bandaging out of the puzzle. The bandaging is done. I have it, quote, flat. It's not really flat because it's, well, it's bumped. It's not going to be flat until you're all the way done. But now I can start doing sliding new techniques to get centers in. So now I'm able to do that. So the first centers I like to put in are these guys here. This obviously doesn't belong here. So I'm going to move this over here. Double turn. And move this back. Okay, so that put these in over here. Now where does this guy go? Well, this guy goes here. So move them in, and now I can do the sliding U technique that I couldn't before. Slide it over here, move it down, and no bandaging. I should fear zero bandaging. And now this comes up like thus. Turn and up, and boom. Okay, so all these centers are in. What about this? Well, we see a bunch of big guys over here. So it's easy for me to visualize because it's the biggest pieces there. Okay, sorry, I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't... Okay, so where do you go? Where do you want to go? Um, looks like I may have some over here, too. You probably want to go here, and you do. Turn it here, slide it over to here, turn it down, slide it back, turn it up. Slide it back here, up, and bang. Okay. So, I have two more that I'd like to get in to here. Do they come from the top here? That, I'm not sure. Now, let's see. Is this one of them? Nope. Okay. So, I suspect... I suspect it's in one of these layers. I, I suspect it's these two. So, I'm going to start getting these guys in. And I'm just going to put everything that's here that doesn't belong down to here or down to any of these layers, should they belong there. Um, now, seeing as I don't have anything here, if I just go like this to start off with, then I'll put that in there. Okay, this one's pretty big. I'm wondering if maybe... I think maybe I tried that one already. Nope, okay. I was repeating myself. Okay. So if it doesn't belong there, maybe it belongs here. Now this one, it's got to be even bigger. Which means maybe it's this, and it is. So this comes to here. Turn this over to here. This comes down here. Turn this back comes back up here, and this comes up over here. Now, if if this were just based on color, it would be easy because it's easy to take them out. It's easy to see. Now, this is a big one, so I would imagine this comes to here. So it's not, this is the easiest part of the solve of an ultimate shapeshifter. And you can see I'm not really struggling with this too much. It's really just a matter of finding pieces. It just takes me uh, that much longer to find the pieces. It takes me that much longer to find the pieces because I don't have colors guiding me. Okay, uh, still want to get this guy in. And I think it's this piece over here. Wow. Maybe it's this piece. Um, okay. Let's see what else we've got. 
No, that's too small. I think all these here are going to be quite big. That doesn't go here. I think it goes here. And I'm going to say yes, it absolutely goes here. So this will come down to here. Turn. Turn. Move this up here. This moves back. So this is all sliding you techniques in this particular part. And boom. Okay. I think maybe this guy comes into here and he does. If this were more poorly made, this part would be very cumbersome, but it's almost like meditation. The ultimate fidget spinner. Okay, so this is coming in here nicely, so I've got all of this in. Now, bear something in mind, I'm getting all these in, but I'm gonna be destroying a lot of that when I do the edge placement. This is just so that I can get something of a perspective with this. Anyhow, I'd like to move this guy in if I can, because I know that that goes to the other side. Now you may say, well, why don't you just put the edges in first? And then put the centers in by sliding new technique. And the answer is, because if I put the, when I put the edges in, sometimes I have to move an entire section. And it's just easier if I have to move an entire section because I can do U or F to algorithms to get them back as opposed to placing them. So by placing it, I'm, I actually am investing in the ease of the next solve. Okay, so now you'll see I've got all of these in and I've got all of these in. And that's key to what I want to do. Okay, so the rest of it is getting these guys in as well. Now I can just go like this because it does place more. So you can see that that's in over there. Um, but let's start moving, because I know that this doesn't belong here. So I'm gonna go boom, bang, splat, clink. Oh, where was I? I think here, clunk, bang, and zoom. Okay, so that placed that. And if I see anything that looks awkwardly big on the top layer, so I actually don't even need the color because I can tell by size which center layers just doesn't make sense. If it's really big, uh-oh. Okay, now I lost track. I gotta go back a step because I lost track of what I was doing. Um, if it's really big, I know it belongs somewhere else. I think this came up here, okay. Let's move this back because I, I run the danger of taking a whole section out. Okay, this, this came over here. This comes across here. This comes over here. Swing this back here, move this up here. I can't mess this up too much because I've already got my unbandaging parts. Okay. So this is done pretty much, and this is done. So now I just want to do my um, six by six portions over here too. And uh, there's a whole lot that I can put in. Whole sections even that I can put in. But let's try like this. If I were to go like this, I've got these two in. Then if I go like this, I can move these two layers like thus. Now I move this back. I move this layer back. Move this over here. And I move this layer in. Oh, the entire layer. Now upon doing that, what did that do for me? I don't really know. Oh, it put these, it put these two in. Okay, I've got one, two, three, one, two, three, four. And I got one, one, two, three, four. So I can do a nice exchange of these four by doing a URF algorithm. And that's the joy of having a, 
even layer puzzle. I just can't lose my perspective. If I were to go to you, to R, and then to F, then I go to you, to you, and then my F is going to be here, to F, to R, to U. Okay, so what that did is it put this entire section in and this entire section in over here. I've got these two, which can exchange actually with these two. Oh, something to bear in mind though. When I did that, notice I took these edges, I swapped these edges. So I gotta do it again to get these edges back. So to U, to R. Now my 2F is only gonna be here, to F to you, to you, to F, to R, oof, to you. Now by doing this, I didn't change anything here, but I got these edges back, my four by four edges back, so that's good. Okay, now I was working on these two and these two. Now let's see if I can coordinate that with just your F to algorithms. That would be to U, to R, and then I'm going to go deep over here, to F, and then to U, to U, to F, to R, and if I didn't have Puzzle Bewilderment, maybe I did it, to U, and I did, but remember I swapped these two, so i got to do it again with the with less of a 2F, with a, a less of a deep 2F, to you, to R, to F, to you, to you, to F. I always get nervous when I go off the beaten path a little bit. To our to you. Okay. Move this back and you can see I've got a whole bunch of these in. So we're doing pretty well. And now we just have to clean up uh, a little bit more. So any of these are fair game to put in. And I only have a couple. These that are on the edge, now yeah, that's going to be a little bit harder. We're going to have to um, work on that. So let's do some sliding U techniques. Okay. Boom, bang. That put these two in. So now I'm gonna go here. Well, let me go here because it gets me two different layers. This layer and this layer. And now I'm gonna move back like this, putting in this layer back. And now I'm gonna move over to here. I just have to remember which layers I did. I do not have colors to guide me. So I have to really just keep my intuitive sense going and bang. Okay, so you can see that my six by six center is here, solved. Six by six center is here, solved. Six by six is solved here and here, and these are only six by six centers. Okay, so. Now what we have left is you can see the eight by eight centers, and I can't use sliding U techniques for this. Um, yeah, I can because if I go to this layer, I find myself blocked on those. So how shall we do this? Well, the first thing that I want to do is I'd like to um, I'd like to uh, move as many to these layers as I can. For instance, both of these belong here. And I notice that there's two that are out here and two that are out here. So I do have a way of putting those in simply. And that's going to look a little like this. So if I move this down, like so, so it's over here, and then I move this like here, doing a URF will swap these two. And that's what I want. So let's go ahead and do it. To you, to R, then we do a deeper cut to F, then do to U, to U, 
and then deep cut 2F, 2R, and 2U. Okay, it brought that here, which is what we wanted. Now bear in mind, it swapped these two as well, but I don't want to move them back in as of yet. What I want to do is I just want to move this to here, bring this up, and I'll move it back. In that way, that did put this in, but now I want to swap these two. To you, to R, and now um, a shallow cut to F, to you, to you, and to F, to R, to you. Okay, so getting there slowly, let's move this back just so that we can take stock in what we've got. Okay, so now what we have is we want to get this guy in and this guy in. So we have two that are out. So how are we going to coordinate, coordinate that? So how are we going to coordinate that? So here's the thing. This guy belongs here. And uh, this guy belongs here. So maybe I can orchestrate uh, an exchange. If I move, okay, just have to remember what's going on. If I move this like that, you can see it puts them together. Now I have to remember that, that that's the last change that I'm gonna do. So it puts these two empty sets together. And remember, this has to come down to here. And then likewise, if I move this to here, it moves these together. Now I have to remember when I when I go back in time, so to speak, when I retrace my steps, I do this first and then this. I just have to remember that because now this can exchange and come down to here. That's that's what I want. Um, but can I make that happen? And the answer is sure, <laughs> but it requires some more movements. So I'm gonna go like this and then bring this down. And go like this. So I have to retrace my steps when I go back. And now I'm going to exchange it with these two and hope that it falls into place the way that I want. So that's going to be so crazy it just might work. To you, to R, and a deep cut to F. And that's to you, to you, and then a deep cut to F. 2R and to you. Okay? So without thinking much about it, I'm going to now move this back over here and move this down. And as you can see, they match. So that's good. And now to retrace my steps for this, this was the first to come down. Oh, no, no, we gotta be careful. Oh. I know the problem. The problem is that I have to get these guys back. I think. I hope what I did was right. But anyway, we're going to go to you, to R, shallow to F, to you, to you, and then to F, to R. To you. Okay, with that said, now I'm going to move this back. And I think this went first. No, some, something went wrong. Maybe I don't need to move it back like that. I'm going to go like this. And this went first. Yes, okay, that went first. You can see these are all matched up. And then this went next, and phew, it did it. Uh, okay, wonderful. So not only did it get these guys back and put these in, it actually did put these all in and these all in just by doing retracing our steps. Now what this illustrates is it's all fine and well to know algorithms. But what's really fun about these ultimate shapeshifters, especially these variants of ultimate shapeshifters, is the fact that you have to use strategy with your algorithms to make it work or you can still get hopelessly lost. 
that's why I love doing Ultimate Shapeshifters. Uh, each solve has its own characteristics. You won't necessarily get issues like this, and there are certain things that happen more simply with this puzzle that could have been a lot more complicated. But you can see I've got all of these centers in, much of these centers in. These themselves aren't in yet, but um, I'm going to have to do them by certain types of parity algorithm, algorithms. But before I do that, I think I'm ready to move to the uh, edges. These edges are in, and these edges are also in, and that was kind of a kind of a gift. But if I were to put these edges in, uh, it's automatic that the four by four edges are in. The six by six edges, this is in. I only have one that's in, and a couple that are not. So I'm going to put this one in and see where things are at. So where is the other one? It's not it there, and I don't have the color to guide me. So I'm just going to kind of experiment here. No, it's not that either. So maybe it's coming from down over here. So the whole key is get one in and see where the rest are. Now notice I had to take this out, but this is going to be easy to place, as are these, because they're symmetric so they can all be URF'd. I'm not going to worry about that yet. But here's what you find. Oh, yeah. Really? Yes. Okay, so these are all in. These are in too, but I'm not going to worry about that yet. These are in. Um, this is not in, and both of these are not in and both of these are not in. So I'm going to exchange these two to you, to R, to F, to you, to you, to F, to R, oop, to you. Okay, um, so so here's what we see. When it comes to the six by six, these are all in, these are all in. This is not in and this is not in. So I've got two that are not in. If three edge, edges were not, weren't in, then that's a, flop, that's a brick parity. If two are not in, that's what I call a floppy parity. And there's a particular way of getting out of this. Now I could fix these now, but I'm not going to as of yet. I probably should. Okay, I'll go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and fix these two right now. To you, to R, and then a deep to F, and that's to you, to you, then a deep to F, to R, to you. Got our centers back, put these guys out, so we do it the next shallow F, to U, to R, now it's this to F, to F, to U, to U, to F, to R, to U. So these are now all back in and we're okay with that. We're good with that. Uh, next, why don't we go ahead and get these guys back in? So move this over here. I said to you, to R, deep, to F, to you, to you, deep, to F, to R, to you, and then you guessed it, gotta do it again with the shallow version, to you, to, ooh, Yikes, to R, to F, to U, to U, to F, to R, to you. Now you heard me, you heard a little bit of a crack there. And it's a it's it's another testament to um Twisty Texas's Twisty Texas puzzle uh, technique that something didn't pop. It's more than just gluing, he's literally anchored it on. It's absolutely amazing. Okay, anyway, so let's pick up where we left off. This is all in. Um, now, something's got misplaced a little bit. Uh, okay. Oh, no, actually it didn't. So, this is all in, this is all in, and we have ourselves a floppy parity. So, here's how we get out of that. I'm going to take this and move this here so that it's opposite where it's supposed to be. And now we're going to move this up, like so. And now we're going to flip these two is that what we're going to do? Yeah, let me see. 
me not lose my perspective here. Okay. Okay. All right. So what we need to do is we we're, we need to pair the proper ones together. This needs to pair with this. This needs to pair with this. Okay. Got a little befuddled there for a second. Um, so I'm going to move this here, which will flip these two. And then I want to move it back. This will be with this where it needs to be. Okay. That makes sense. So do a Red Bull 2R 2B to you, and it's an L in this layer, L, to up, Ri, to up, R, to up, to F, R to F L I to B to R. We then move this up and we see that we have paired these together, which is what we want to do. We also accidentally move this out, but we can easily move that in with our sliding U technique, which means we move it in. Move it here, slide them both down here. So there's a little bit of damage control, but nothing, nothing you can't handle. And this comes up like so, and boom. Okay, um, let's go ahead and get things back. This will come here. Okay, so this will come here. No, it won't. Okay. Okay, so bringing it back to where it was before. Uh, let's see, I think this turned here, and this turned here, and this turned here. Something like that. Okay, so it's looking closer and closer to what we want. Uh, now, th so this is actually lined up. These are lined up, they just have to be flip flop now. So to you, whoop, let me not get lost, to you, to R, to F, to you, to you, to F, to R, to you. Okay, so looking at edges now, now we go down to the last ones. Now before we do that, I think we have to deal with these guys here. So these are the last of our centers. And then we're going to deal with the edges. <clears throat> so this is what we would call a brick parity. And really what we want to do... Uh, let's see how we're going to do this. We want to take this, move this to here. This will come down to here and this will slide up to here. That's in essence what a brick parity is. And this is going to be the right-sided version, so the way that this is going to work, if memory serves, let's see if I remember this algorithm. Put this up over here, this will come like all the way over here, okay. So, the way this is going to work, and either this will scramble it again, or I'll remember it, it's a 2F. Then we have U, but slicing it to here, U, 2R, UI, 2L, U, 2R, UI, 2L. Okay, then we do another 2F, then a 2R, and 2F, and finish it up with a 2L, U, 2R, UI, to L U to R U I. Okay, this comes across here, and we finish it up with a two F. 
Okay, now, so that should have done a couple things. First thing it did is it did put this in. So this plane should be okay, but it moves it up to here, which is okay, because it matches these two now. And it moved this up. Okay, so what it appears to be is these two belong over here. So let's just kind of move that in. We've got 2U, 2R, 2F. 2U, 2U, 2F, 2R, and 2U. Okay, so what I'm left with is these two. Now, now let's get these back here as well, because I just flip-flopped these guys. So 2U, 2R, 2F, 2U, 2U, 2F. 2R, 2U. I'm just happy that I haven't popped this puzzle yet. Okay, so we have a couple of... Uh, so now that I, I remember the floppy parody, or rather the brick parody, I think I can work my way through it. I think I can work my way through it. Okay, so if this is going to be the right-sided version, or left-sided version, sometimes it gets a little tricky to translate it, so this is going to be my U now. So we're going to do... Um, 2F, let me, okay, yeah, 2F, and this starts off with a UI, 2L, U, 2R, UI, 2L, U, 2R, do a 2F, pull this up, and 2F, then do a 2R, UI, 2L, U, mm. To our UI, to L, U. Now I'm losing faith a little bit because it's it just seems a little foreign to me. This comes in and this comes across like this. And okay, it actually works. So all these centers are in. All the centers are in. So now I'm going to move this back here. So let's take a look at where we are with our uh, edges. So this doesn't belong here. I think it belongs here. Actually, I'm going to say that I think this belongs here. I think. To you. To R. To F. To you. To you. To F. To R. To you. Okay. And that leaves these two. So we'll do a URF algorithm to U, to R, to F, to U, to U, to F, to R, and to U. Now we have one final push, I believe, because this and this have to be exchanged, so it's a floppy parity, not a brick parity, but a floppy parity. So I'm going to hold it like this. We're going to move it in this position and now do a red bull. 2R, 2B, 2U, L. 2 up, RI, 2 up, my hands are shaking. R, Two up, two F, R, two F, L, I. Could I be almost done? Two B and two R. This comes like so. And that, I think it fixed it, but I have to do some damage control. 
You can see all the edges are in, and now we're just gonna put this uh, in with the well. <laughs> Funny story, well actually, can we do a sliding U technique? This turns over here. I bring this up, and as you can see, we cannot. All right, so it used to be there'll be a quick sliding U technique to bring it out. So what I'm gonna have to do is something a little clever. I'm gonna move this down here, move this over here, and move this up here. Now I'm gonna do a U or F to exchange this with this. And that's gonna consist of two U, two R, and a deep two F, two U, two U, and a deep two F, two R, and two U. Okay, so now this moves into here. And that should have exchanged those, which I believe it did. So then this moves down like, whoop, other way, like so. And we're not quite done because now we have to flip these two and then I think we're done. And that is to you, to R, and a shallow to F, to you, to you, shallow to F, to R, and finally to you. And done. So, Twisty Texas Epic 4x6x8 Bump Cuboid has been conquered, has been scrambled, and has been solved. And so it remains as fantastic as it was from the start to the finish. You can see that it was a seamless solve. There's no problems, no lockups. About as perfect a puzzle as you can possibly get. I've often talked about the hardest Thing about a puzzle, the hardest aspect of a puzzle. Sometimes it's the scramble, sometimes it's certain parts of the solve. The hardest part about this puzzle was not the scramble, was not the solve. The hardest part of this puzzle is the part that you're about to see me do right now.